Please be seated. Before we begin today's special celebration, I have one housekeeping announcement. I would ask please that you, if your cell phones, if you would either turn them off, turn them to vibrate, and if that doesn't work, then turn them to stun. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. Okay, let me explain something. As dean, my principal responsibility is to rouse the troops. So let me try that again. Good morning. Good, morning. Good. now I get to keep my job another year. <laughs> I am Donald Latender, the dean of the College of Pharmacy. It is my distinct pleasure to offer a heartfelt welcome to a representative from our Board of Regents, University Administration, College of Pharmacy faculty, staff, family, friends, guests, and most especially, members of the graduating class of 2012. <laughs> to each and every one of you, we extend sincere greetings and thanks for your presence here today. Today, marks the college's 126th commencement. The graduates seated before me have completed a long and rigorous course of study. Speaking on behalf of the faculty, I can assure you that we are most confident these graduates are extremely well prepared for the challenges of healthcare delivery in the 21st century. This morning, we are gathered here to celebrate their achievements and bid them well on their impending journey. At this time, I would like to recognize the individuals joining me this morning on the platform. Starting from my left, your right, they are Dr. Michael Kelly, Associate Dean for Professional Student Affairs and Professor, who will be introducing today's graduates. Seated next to Dean Kelly, Two of our distinguished professors, Professor Coraline Truitt and Professor Larry Fleckenstein, who will be assisting with the hooding as the graduates cross the stage to receive their degrees. Next, Regent Robert Downer. Regent Downer, a highly distinguished attorney here in Iowa City who has served as a member of the Board of Regents since 2003. He is a 1963 graduate of the University of Iowa College of Law and every year since 1995, he has been recognized as one of the best lawyers in America in the field of corporate law, among other fields. We are always pleased to have Regent Downer join the College of Pharmacy family since he has pharmacy in his blood. The fact of the matter is, Regent Downer's dad was a pharmacist. Next, Dr. Jane Osterhaus. I'll do a more full introduction later but Dr. Osterhaus is our commencement speaker. Next, special honoree, Robert Osterhaus, who today will become the college's first ever recipient of a highly prestigious honorary doctoral degree. Next, President Sally Mason. On August 1, 2007, Dr. Mason took the helm of the University of Iowa as its 20th president. She will be formally conferring the degrees during today's ceremony. During her time here at Iowa, she has accomplished so much, and I feel especially privileged to serve as a part of her management team. Of her many, many accomplishments, it is only fitting to offer special mention that President Mason's steady hand led the university through one of the nation's most devastating natural disasters following the floods of 2008. And I urge you, if you haven't been to Iowa City for a while, get out and see the reformation and the reconstruction. It's like a phoenix coming out of the, the fires and, and embers. She's just done a remarkable job with her steady hand. She's been a beacon of hope and inspiration during these past few years of economic challenges, which severely tested public support for higher education. And she's become an ardent champion of student engagement 
and leadership development. We are deeply honored to have her present here today. Dr. Barry Butler. Dr. Butler serves as the Executive Vice President and Provost. For those of you who might be wondering what a Provost does, the Provost is the University's Chief Academic Officer. He oversees all of the University's academic programs, faculty, and student affairs, and strategic academic planning. Dr. Butler assumed the position of Provost in 2011 following a distinguished career in our College of Engineering, including many years of service as Dean immediately prior to being named as Provost. The Provost serves as a key right-hand person to the President. You should also know that he's my direct boss, so treat him nicely so I can come back next year, please. <laughs> Dr. John Keller, Associate Provost for Graduate Education and Dean of the Graduate College. Dr. Keller has held these responsibilities since 2000. Dr. Keller is a professor of dental research in oral and maxillofacial, say that three times fast, surgery. He will join President Mason in the conferral of today's honorary doctoral degree. Before we commence, uh, there are several other dignitaries in attendance here today that I would like to acknowledge, and they're seated here in the audience. First, Dr. Jordan Cohen. Dr. Cohen currently serves as Vice President for Research, but he is also Dean Emeritus of our College of Pharmacy. I'm the ninth Dean of the College of Pharmacy. He was the eighth. My longtime friend and colleague, Vice President Dr. Jordan Cohen. Jordan, please stand. One of the very special things, one of the truly unique things about pharmacy in Iowa is the tremendous interface between our college, the practitioners in this state, and our state pharmacy association. For the uninitiated, the fact of the matter is our state association is without question the best state pharmacy association in the United States. And that's a credit to several folks. I would like to identify four individuals who either in the past were linked with IPA or are currently serving in that capacity. First, Thomas Temple is the CEO Emeritus. Tom stepped down this past December 31st. He is the CEO Emeritus of IPA and recently was the recipient of Drake University Colleges of Pharmacy, College of Pharmacy's highly distinguished uh, Weaver Medal of Honor. And I would ask Tom and, and to stand and please uh, remain standing while I introduce the other three individuals who are part of our IPA team. Second, the new CEO of IPA, Kate Gaynor. Kate joined us January 1. Kate is a graduate of the University of Wisconsin School of Pharmacy, and she has just hit the ground running and is doing a magnificent job of following up as our new CEO of IPA. Third, Bill Wormer. Bill Wormer has a long and distinguished career as the chief counsel for IPA. And, chief, and Bill is well known in advocacy circles and on Capitol Hill and has just been an ardent supporter of pharmacy throughout his career at IPA. And lastly, Anthony Pudlow. Anthony is a Drake Pharmacy School grad who recently joined after serving as a pharmacist in North Carolina, recently joined IPA as Vice President for Professional Affairs. Please join me in welcoming our colleagues from IPA. <laughs> Last year, this university had the distinction of honoring several other honorary doctoral recipients. And one of those was Dick Myers. Dick is a longstanding businessman a legislator, and someone who has contributed to the state in innumerable ways. Dick is joined with his wife Doris here in celebration of Robert Osterhaus's receipt in the fact that they are very close friends and formed and served previously in the legislature. Dick and Doris, would you mind please standing and be recognized? Mr. Osahouse is a member of the class of 52. I'll mention more about this later. 60 years ago, he sat, well, not necessarily here, 
but graduated 60 years ago this month. We have several members of the class of 52 who have come back to honor their colleague. We would like to ask the members of the class of 52 and their spouses to please stand and let us recognize them roundly, please. And then last introduction is the lovely young lady to my immediate left, the sign language interpreter, Kelly Neppel. Thank you, Kelly. <laughs> to the graduates, you look fabulous. I've been asked by the graduates to assure all of the parents here that the way you've seen your Daughters and sons dressed here this morning is exactly the way they've dressed for the last four years. I just want you to know that. <laughs> All kidding aside, you look most professional, and you knew I would say that. At this time, we're going to move forward with the presentation of our honorary doctoral degree. In 2006, the faculty of the University of Iowa voted to begin conferring honorary degrees upon individuals who have demonstrated extraordinary and sustained achievements in research, scholarship, education, artistic creation, social activism, human rights, humanitarian outreach, or other endeavors consistent with the values of the University of Iowa. Robert J. Osterhaus, would you please rise? Robert J. Osterhaus, or Bob O, as we finally refer to him, is a lifelong Iowan and a 1952 graduate of the University of Iowa, as I've already noted. During his career, he has distinguished himself as a progressive leader in the pharmacy profession, a staunch supporter of higher education, and a dedicated public servant. Mr. Osterhaus's, Mr. Osterhaus's family pharmacy in Makokota has been widely recognized as one of the most progressive patient-centered practices in the nation, and he has been among the strongest advocates for improving the quality and safety of medication use in our healthcare system. Osterhaus Pharmacy continues to be a highly sought-after site for community pharmacy residents and student pharmacists seeking clerkship experiences. Within the profession, Mr. Osterhaus has held numerous leadership positions. He is a past president of the Iowa Pharmacy Association, the American Pharmacists Association at the national level, the Accreditation Council for Pharmaceutical Education, which oversees the accreditation of all schools of pharmacy, and the Community Pharmacy Foundation. He has also served as a member of the Executive Committee of the International Pharmaceutical Federation. A longtime community leader, Mr. Osterhaus provided substantial leadership to numerous organizations in Makokota. At the state level, he served a nine-year term on the State Board of Pharmacy and was elected to four terms as a member of the Iowa House of Representatives. As a legislator, Mr. Osterhaus distinguished himself as the ranking member of the Appropriations Subcommittee on Human Services and provided leadership in the creation of the Hawk Eye Health Insurance Program for Iowa Children. He also initiated several reforms in the state Medicaid program. Mr. Osterhaus's leadership and service has been recognized through his receipt of numerous awards and honors, including the Lifetime Achievement Award from the International Pharmaceutical Federation, the Hubert H. Humphrey Award from the American Pharmacists Association, the Bowl of Hygiene Award for Community Service, the Distinguished Iowa Pharmacists Award, and the Remington Medal, which is, uh, which is American Pharmacy's highest recognition. Without question, Mr. Lo Mr. Osterhaus's legacy of leadership and service, as well as his dedicated spirit of professionalism, stands as an inspiration to future generations of Iowa pharmacists and College of Pharmacy graduates. He's one of you now. A common refrain of Bob's is, and he said it again this morning, on it, if it's good for the patient, then it's good for pharmacy. And you know you've arrived as a pharmacist, and I know I did, in this great state, when you receive one of Bobo's infamous evening telephone calls asking you 
What have you done to advance pharmacy today? From this day forward, Bob O will hold a special bond with the class of 2012. And we went over that last night, didn't we? Exactly 60 years after graduating from Iowa with a degree in pharmacy, he's been asked to return and be a part of this very special class of graduates. I can only imagine the joy and pride his family must feel today. And they're seated over here to my left, and we'll recognize them later. Husband to Ann for 59 years. I just have to stop right here and ask Ann to stand up. Ann, stand up, please. Husband to Ann for 59 years, father of 10 children, grandfather to 26 children, great-grandfather of three and counting. Pharmacist, statesman, change agent, leader, no matter what moniker you choose to place upon Bob, one thing is for certain. No one, I mean no one, in the 126-year history of our college is more deserving of the special recognition we are about to bestow upon Robert J. Osterhaus. It is now my distinct pleasure to ask Dr. John Keller, Associate Provost for Graduate Education and Dean of the Graduate College and President Sally Mason to come forward for the conferral of this degree. President Mason. Robert Osterhaus is recommended to you by the Honorary Degree Selection Committee of the University of Iowa to receive the Honorary Doctor of Science, and the Graduate College is honored to present this recommendation to you for conferral of this degree. On recommendation of the Honorary Degree Selection Committee, I confer on Robert Osterhaus the Honorary Degree Doctor of Science. Congratulations. That's the first time I can say that Bob Go got a standing O, <laughs> and rightly deserved. As I mentioned, I would like to recognize the Osterhaus family. This is a very special day of celebration, as you can imagine, and the support that Anne has provided over these past 59 plus years, and their lovely children and in-laws and the great-grandchildren and and uh, the grandchildren and great-grandchildren, I would like to ask all of you to please rise so we could recognize you, please. <laughs> At this point, I'm going in a moment to ask soon-to-be Dr. Macklin O'Brien to join me here at the podium, but let me tell you a little bit about Mac. 
before I invite him up here. Mac is the president of the class of 2012. Mac grew up here in Iowa City and is a graduate of West High School. It is amazing how much he has completed in the short four years he has spent with us. Mac has been an active member of the American Society of Health System Pharmacists, American Pharmacists Association, Academy of Student Pharmacists, Phi Lambda Sigma, Leadership Society, Iowa Pharmacy Association, our College of Pharmacy Student Ambassador Network, College of Pharmacy Admissions Committee, and the list goes on and on and on. When did you have any time to do anything else? <laughs> Amazing. Just absolutely an engaged citizen of our college for sure. He has served in numerous leadership roles, received many awards, and provided countless volunteer hours. Mac's presence has greatly benefited not only college, but truly the entire community. He walks the walk of professionalism. There is no question in his leadership abilities, consummate professionalism, and exceptional interpersonal skills will soon become evident to his new colleagues and the patients he'll be serving in the coming days of his first year of postgraduate residency training in Vancouver, Washington center called Peace Health Center there that Mac will be uh, leaving shortly to join their staff to begin his residency training. In my mind, Mac epitomizes the type of balanced student we are trying to nurture here at UI College of Pharmacy. Academically driven, professionally engaged, and exemplary in demeanor. Please join me in welcoming the future, soon to be, Dr. O'Brien to the podium where he will provide some remarks representing the outstanding class of 2012. Mac? Good morning. Thank you, Dean, for the introduction. And uh, I want to welcome Dr. Osterhaus to our family in the class of 2012. My name is Mac O'Brien, and I'm a Hawkeye. <laughs> Class of 2012, or perhaps more appropriately now, fellow pharmacists. If you could get out your clickers, there will be a few questions on the treatment of acute coronary syndrome to follow. On a more serious note, it's been a long journey, but the important thing is that we're here with our family, our friends, our peers, our colleagues, and some of our supporters who are here in spirit. We celebrate the end of our pharmacy journey at the University of Iowa College of Pharmacy and the start of another. Let us not forget to thank those who have cultivated our knowledge and led us on this journey, our professors, our preceptors, our academic advisors. Class of 2012, today we come together as classmates and leave as colleagues. We join the pharmacy classes of 2012 from the other 128 pharmacy schools nationwide and a team of pharmacists worldwide. A world of pharmacies small enough to care, but large enough to make an impact on the health care of thousands. In just a matter of minutes, all the years, months, weeks, and days spent studying, downloading notes from ICON, memorizing the clotting cascade, feverishly writing during lecture, filling out Scantrons, running for a coffee just before a two-hour test, only to realize one hour into the exam that your bladder is revolting, <laughs> jabbing each other with needles and lancets, and performing medication counseling on the citizens of Farmington who we've come to know and love. <laughs> All of this time we've had in, we have invested will, in a matter of minutes, have earned us each, each one of us a Doctor of Pharmacy degree from one of the nation's top pharmacy programs. When our professors and guest lecturers would say that people from across the country recognize the University of Iowa College of Pharmacy, they weren't kidding. Many of you have experienced this recognition while out on the hunt for a job or a residency. And it is no surprise that the College of Pharmacy with the 126 year history is so highly regarded for producing outstanding Iowa pharmacists. Class, we will leave this room today as graduates of the University of Iowa College of Pharmacy the 126th graduating class of this college, and Dean Latender's first class of Hawkeye pharmacists to see all the way from White Coat to Farm D. We will disperse across the country, but the University of Iowa College of Pharmacy will always be our pharmacy home.
Today we become the teachers of pills and people and future pharmacists alike. We propel the vision of pharmacists as direct patient care providers and the mission of pharmacy as the most accessible members of the healthcare team with the goal of optimizing the therapeutic outcomes, quality, and quantity of life for our patients. Class of 2012, I want to challenge all 112, 113, <laughs> of us to enter the pharmacy world with an open mind as we begin our professional careers. As you're all aware, the, pharmacy, the way pharmacy is practiced changes quickly. Think about the changes that have occurred since 2008 when we walked across the stage and received our white coats. Be amenable to the changes that are happening. Be okay with them. Help them, help them along and better, and better shape them. Class of 2012, remember back to when you were interviewing for pharmacy school and you were asked, why pharmacy? Remember the reason you started this journey in the first place. Most importantly, I challenge each and every one of you to be a champion for the profession. No matter your practice setting, from the smallest independent pharmacy to the largest academic medical center, be a pharmacy champion. When you see a gap in patient care that you know your pharmacy training can fill, step up to the plate and take on that role. Speak up for your profession. This is not a job, this is a profession. One of your biggest pet peeves should be a pharmacy or health system that does not utilize pharmacists to their full potential. Think about the knowledge you've acquired over the past four years, like the pockets of your white coat at the beginning of rotations. They were likely empty. <laughs> but gradually they began to fill with notes, pocket cards, references, and quick tidbits of knowledge that you had accrued. Reach into those pockets and step up to the plate. Don't sit idly by. Be a pharmacy champion. In the hospital setting, be a champion for pharmacy by integrating your knowledge and the, pre and the presence into the inpatient multidisciplinary team. If it is not already happening, help make it happen. Take discharge counseling, for example. Who's better suited to counsel, those discharging the patient or the pharmacist? The clear answer is the pharmacist. Transform your role into that of a patient educator, advocate, therapeutic consultant, and multi-medication manager. In the community setting, be a champion for pharmacy by working with your local physicians. Let them know that you're equipped with the knowledge to administer vaccines and manage prevalent disease states such as diabetes and hypertension. You can free up the physician's clinic schedule so they may tend to more acutely ill patients while you assist with routine vaccination and disease state management. Pharmacy can fill the gap between the patient and their physician by being the care provider but only if you speak up and step up as a pharmacy champion. Thank you, class of 2012. Thank you, families, friends, professors, and College of Pharmacy staff. Congratulations on setting the foundation for the rest of your professional pharmacy career by attaining the degree we are about to receive, as this will be the first of many great professional accomplishments to come from the University of Iowa College of Pharmacy, class of 2012. Congratulations on being Hawkeye pharmacists. Thank you, Mac, for those inspirational words. <clears throat> Now you can understand more clearly well why Mac was chosen by his peers to serve as president of his class. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to introduce our commencement speaker, Dr. Jane Osterhaus, Bob and Ann's fourth child, eldest daughter. She holds a BS in pharmacy from right here, the University of Iowa, an MS in pharmacy administration, and a PhD in health policy from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. She is currently vice president of Wasatch Health Outcomes, a health outcomes strategy and research consulting company. She provides strategic advice on the development and implementation of outcomes research to pharmaceutical and biopharmaceutical companies. Prior to co-founding Wasatch Health Outcomes, Jane held senior 
health outcomes and policy positions within the pharmaceutical industry, corporations like the Upjohn Company, Glaxo Welcome, and Searle. She has served as a board member of the American College of Clinical Pharmacies Research Institute, the ACC Practicum Review Committee for Pharmacoeconomics and Outcomes, Pharma, that's Big Pharma, Foundation Pharmacoeconomics Advisory Committee, and Pharma's Health Outcomes Work Group. Jane has served on the editorial board of pharmacotherapy in the annals of pharmacotherapy. She is a member of numerous pharmacy and health service research associations and is a fellow of the American College of Clinical Pharmacy. She is without question, yet again, another fellow Hawkeye who walks the talk. Please join me in welcoming to the podium Dr. Jane Osterhaus. Thank you, Dean Latender. Congratulations to the University of Iowa College of Pharmacy 2012. I'd like to add my welcome to all of the graduates today and to your supporters who are able to attend your ceremony. A special welcome to my father and congratulations to him for being awarded an honorary doctorate. And to my mother, for as you've heard, he wouldn't be here without her, nor would several of these people over here attending this special <laughs> ceremony today. I believe this is as much an honor for her as it is for him. I'm sure there are all sorts of emotions and thoughts running through your heads right now. You have boards to think of, finances, jobs, residency, relocation, remembering that Mother's Day is this Sunday, <laughs> pride that you made it through this process, excitement as you look to the future, perhaps a little trepidation, euphoria, or maybe you save that until you've got your notice that you've passed the boards, or you may be thinking, how many more Osterhouses do I have to listen to today? <laughs> Unless you've got some of my cousins or siblings coming to your post-graduation festivities, I think I am the last one. <laughs> your time at the College of Pharmacy has been a provocative time for humanity. The world has provided a full measure of cataclysms, floods right in your own backyard, revolutions, earthquakes, oil spills, a financial meltdown, so in that context, there is one additional emotion I would like to talk to you today about, and that is gratitude. Perhaps the most important emotion to feel at this moment is not pride or excitement or ambition, but gratitude. I indicated gratitude as an emotion, but gratitude has also been conceptualized as an attitude, a moral virtue, a habit, a personality trait, and a coping response. According to the Greater Good Science Center at the University of California, Berkeley, broadly defined, gratitude is an acknowledgement that a person has received something of value from another moral agent. Most theoretical treatments agree that gratitude results most often from a specific set of attributions. First, when the benefit is evaluated positively. Second, when the benefit one has encountered is not attributed to one's own effort. And third, when the benefit was rendered intentionally by the benefactor. There is a consensus that gratitude can be regarded as a moral emotion and that it leads intent to behavior intended to benefit others. Why gratitude? You didn't arrive at this spot in this ballroom on your own even though you have worked very hard to get here. We all owe something to those who came before us. As has been noted, each of us has drunk from wells we did not dig. Each of us has been warmed by fires we did not build. But even before your arrival at the University of Iowa, you should be grateful that you are here on this earth. For the probability of you existing as you today has been estimated at one in 400 trillion. <laughs> now I know all of you graduates are good with numbers, they called it pharmacy math back in my day. <laughs> but for those struggling with so many zeros, the Buddhist interpretation of this is as follows. Imagine there was one life preserver thrown somewhere in some ocean, and there is exactly one turtle in all of those oceans, swimming underwater somewhere. The probability that you came about and exist today is the same as that turtle sticking its head out of the water in the middle of that life preserver 
on one try. <laughs> so simply being grateful for one's existence is sometimes worth a little reflection. I'm grateful for having been able to use my pharmacy skills in somewhat non-traditional ways, at least non-traditional for when I graduated more than 30 years ago, by being involved in outcomes research. With some serendipity, some hard work, and perhaps some divine intervention, I have been able to shape that initial involvement into a very challenging and enjoyable career. I wouldn't have been able to achieve these things, nor would I have even realized that such opportunities were available had I not had the good fortune to have others encourage me to engage in pharmacy via participation in student APHA, or ASP as it's now called, which allowed me to meet and interact with current Iowa and national pharmacy leaders and future leaders. By participating in an NPC summer internship at Abbott Labs, which led me to apply to graduate school, which as you've just heard, took me to the University of North Carolina for a master's degree, which was followed by participation in an Iowa Pharmacists Association internship, which took me back to North Carolina to complete my PhD, which led to a job in the pharmaceutical industry to contribute to that, at the time, new field called pharmacoeconomics. I've been fortunate to hold various positions at the Upjohn Company, Glaxo, and Searle, and never mind that none of those exist in name anymore, but my time at those companies was professionally challenging and had great rewards. At each company, we were able to embark on pharmacist-led projects that provided me the opportunity to work with some great pharmacy leaders and also help generate support for some of the processes of care that currently exist within pharmacy practice. Of course, throughout all of this, I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge that there are various generations of pharmacists that have paved this road for me. And without those pharmacists before me, including my father, Max Eggleston, Tom Temple, my husband, my brother and sister-in-law, although they aren't really a generation ahead of me, <laughs> I would not be standing before you today. Sometimes, by the time you realize you should be thanking someone for their lighting the fire within you, which helped you to get to the place you are today, it's too late to thank that person. If that person is no longer around, however, it is never too late to display gratitude by paying it forward. John F. Kennedy stated, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. As you enter the profession of pharmacy, what words of gratitude should you live by? Appreciation, caring, compassion, generous, sincere, thoughtful, the close relatives of gratitude and additional words, common courtesy, kindness, and consideration. Translating such words into actions as pharmacists provides you the opportunity to demonstrate gratitude both to your patients and to your profession. As pharmacists, you will have many opportunities to apply your knowledge and wisdom to provide healing care to patients. Be grateful for your patients. Without them, where would you be? But remember, a patient does not consist only of biology. There are no blood levels or minimum inhibitory concentrations that explain worry or happiness or quality of life. There isn't an organ one can probe up to uncover kindness or some tissue one can biopsy to find intestinal fortitude. For me, that's a good thing because one of my roles has been to figure out how to best measure some of those human concepts. But it is beneficial to remember we can't always be reduced to chemical reactions or electrical impulses. The knowledge and skill of a pharmacist are components of your profession. They're critical. But the importance of your relations with other people, be they patients or colleagues, should not be underestimated. Appreciate them. As pharmacists, you have worked long and hard to gain a level of knowledge that most people don't have. With that knowledge comes additional responsibility. You all have had some unique experiences along the way to achieving your degree. Generously share those experiences, your knowledge, and your talent. Be a benefactor. What is the point of having it if you don't share it? Isabella Allende noted that she did not intend to be cremated with wealth or knowledge or talent, nor should you. It is in giving that you will connect with others, and caring for patients should begin with caring about them. I'm sure you've all heard, your patients won't care what you know until they know that you care. Be grateful for your profession. 
When my father was inducted as president of the APHA, Lehman Olson was president of the Iowa Pharmacists Association. He noted, Bob is president of APHA because of his sincerity and dedication to our profession. He has always been willing to stand up for what he believes to be correct for pharmacy. He continues, we too must be willing to give back to our profession. We must realize that we are part of a professional family and thoughtfully support one another. How to intentionally render benefit or demonstrate gratitude? I encourage you to adopt an attitude for gratitude. You all know the definition of a communicable disease, an infectious disease transmissible from person to person by direct contact with an affected individual. You also, I'm sure, have often heard people decrying the rampant decline in civility, the crumbling of social conduct with people thinking only of themselves. Well, gratitude can be as communicable as ingratitude. If each of you live by the words you utter, you could start an epidemic. As Margaret Mead noted, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. I challenge you all to openly display gratitude, not just for your patients and your profession, but for the communities in which you live. Showing gratitude is a display of character. Some concrete steps to displaying gratitude. Be conscious of your treasures. Be a benefactor. Practice kindness. Be nice, as Sarah Adams has noted, even to the pizza delivery guy. In the big pizza wheel of life, sometimes you're the hot bubbly cheese, and sometimes you're the burnt crust. And it's good to remember the fickle spinning of the pizza wheel. Practice common courtesy. Write and mail thank you notes. My mom is famous for noting you should always write a thank you note. Everyone likes to know you appreciate the things they do. Our rule is, if the value of what someone did or gave you is greater than $5, a thank you note should be written. Low bars are better than high in this case. It doesn't take that much time, and it is incredibly meaningful. And while this is not a public service announcement for the Postal Service, text messages and emails don't count. <laughs> Make a contribution to your communities. Serve on committees and boards. Your expertise may be invaluable. I'm currently helping our school district with a major survey project, which is one of my strengths, which also means it will be less likely that I will be asked to chaperone the junior-senior prom, which is also a good thing. Make a contribution to your profession. I've heard a lot last night about people volunteering at free medical clinics. Continue to do that. Participate in career days at your local schools. Judge science fairs. Actively support your local, state, and national pharmacy organizations. Participate in public policy. You've heard that my father served in the state legislature for a number of years. And amongst his many awards, he received the Humphrey Award in 1999. Hubert Humphrey, a pharmacist, was considered a leading progressive in American public life supporting both social justice and civil rights issues. Humphrey was considered to have a life story of rich accomplishment and shattering frustration. He served five non-consecutive terms in the U.S. Senate between 1948 and 1976, and is credited with much legislation, including the health insurance program known as Medicare, that has improved the quality of life of many people. What a way to display gratitude. Modeling gratitude by saying thank you isn't too tough. Modeling a spirit of gratitude takes more effort. Don't take others for granted. Don't take your profession for granted. Marcel Proust said, let us be grateful to the people who make us happy. They are the charming gardeners who make our souls blossom. I would venture that the people who helped you reach this achievement today didn't always make you happy, but nevertheless, you may owe them a debt of gratitude. Congratulations to the class of 2012, and remember, gratitude is not only the greatest of virtues, but a parent of all the others. Wow, some wonderful words to challenge us going forward. And with the thought of challenge, before we get to conferring degrees, I would now like to ask President Mason to come forward 
and issue a charge to our graduates. President Mason. Thank you, Dean Latender. Graduates, you really do look fabulous. What a great day. And my welcome, not only to the graduates, but to my faculty and staff colleagues, to family and friends, and to honored guests who are here with us today. It is truly a great pleasure to share with you this joyous occasion. Now, I have a double-edged task this morning. Bidding you farewell from the University of Iowa is one of my greatest honors <clears throat> and one of my most difficult duties as well. You have been central to the excellence of this university and to creating the cutting edge discovery that marks our distinction. And that's why we're proud to send you out into the world and that's why we are also sad to see you go. Healthcare and the health sciences are central to the University of Iowa's identity to the intellectual contributions that we make to the world, and to the applied service that we provide to our state and nation's citizens. And pharmacy at Iowa has a distinguished tradition and reputation. We are among the top 20 pharmacy programs in the country today, and we are the fourth oldest public pharmacy school. We boast a tradition of excellence that spans over a century and a quarter. And I know you are proud to be a part of such a sterling legacy, and we are proud to have you continue the best that the profession of pharmacy has to offer as graduates of our college. In 1851, the great German chemist Justus von Liebig wrote in Familiar Letters in Chemistry, only about 70 years ago was chemistry like a grain of seed from a ripe fruit separated from the other physical sciences medicine, pharmacy, and the useful arts had prepared the soil upon which this seed was to germinate and to flourish. Now, just as pharmacy has planted and cultivated amazing scientific seeds over 200 years ago, so too has our College of Pharmacy nurtured and grown the remarkable seeds of knowledge and practice that are flourishing within you today as you graduate. We are truly proud of your accomplishments and we are proud to send you off to continue growing as a pharmacy professional in your new communities. The profession of pharmacy has come a long way since those fledgling days of the useful arts over 200 years ago. And it has also come a long way since the more recent days of the corner druggist. No matter what your professional pursuits in the field may be, you will be dealing with medications, products, technology, healthcare systems, and even economic and financial issues unheard of not that many years ago. But knowing the College of Pharmacy as I do, I'm confident that you will still bring the essential qualities of that long ago corner druggist to your work. Not just professional competence, but a sense of humanity and compassion to the healthcare needs of the people that you serve. So once again, it's truly my great pleasure to offer you congratulations Good luck and best wishes for great success in the wonderful years ahead of you. We are very, very proud of you. Thank you. Thank you, President Mason. May I ask the graduates to please stand? President Mason, these candidates have completed all the requirements for the degree Doctor of Pharmacy and are recommended to you by the faculty of the College of Pharmacy for the conferring of their degrees. On recommendation of the faculty of the College of Pharmacy and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Regents, State of Iowa, I confer on each of you the degree Doctor of Pharmacy as qualified and designated. Congratulations, you did it. And I would like to ask Associate Dean Kelly to the podium so that he can read the, the students' names, the graduates' names, and for the conferring of the degrees. Uh, Dean Kelly, and let me remind you too,
that during this process, Drs. Truitt and Fleckenstein will be doing the hooding. Please. You can be seated. It is my great honor and pleasure to introduce to you the class of 2012. Today, each student will be receiving a hood. This is a symbol of doctoral education. As the faculty marched in, you probably noticed that the trailing hoods are of many colors. The length and the shape of the hood indicate the degree that is granted. The lining displays the official colors of the university awarding the degree, and the velvet trim indicates the field of study. The hood the students will receive today has an olive coloring that indicates the clinical doctorate of pharmacy. Stars on the gown indicate the levels of academic achievement. These are noted in the program. The cords being worn by some students indicate selected achievements. The purple and white cords are for high academic achievement and membership in the Rokai Honor Society. The green and gold cords indicate high achievement in leadership and membership in the Phi Lambda Sigma fraternity. Several of the graduates will receive their hoods from immediate family members that are alumni of the College of Pharmacy. I will now ask the graduates to begin to line up behind me one row at a time, and I will introduce the graduates to you. There is a professional photographer that will take photographs of each graduate. Please feel free to come forward and take a picture of your own. That will be quite all right. So, Mac. Dr. Macklin Connor O'Brien. <laughs> North Liberty, Iowa. Mac will be uh, beginning his career at Peace Health Southwest Washington Medical Center in Vancouver, Washington. Dr. Nicholas Stumpf. Dr. Stumpf graduates with high distinction. He is from Dubuque, Iowa, and will uh, begin his career at Finley Hospital in Dubuque, Iowa. Dr. Lindsay Marie Hendricks. She is from Bartlett, Illinois, and she will uh, move to Morton Grove, Illinois, and, and be employed by One Point Patient Care. Dr. Melissa Statz. <laughs> Des Moines, Iowa. She will begin working at Frodert Hospital in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Dr. Caitlin Adams. <laughs> Dr. Adams graduates with distinction. She is from Cedar Falls and will begin a PGY-1 residency at Kansas City VA Medical Center this summer. Dr. Callie Liddell. <laughs> Dr. Liddell is from Shakopee, Sh Minnesota, and will uh, work for Cub Pharmacies in, Twins in the Twin Cities. Dr. Jessica Jackson. Rockford, Illinois. She will be with High V Pharmacy in Quincy, Illinois. Dr. Carolyn Gilbertson. <laughs> Dr. Gilbertson graduates with distinction. She is from Plymouth, Minnesota, and will begin her career at the University of Minnesota Medical Center in a residency program in Minneapolis. Dr. Julie Lynn Freeman. <laughs> Ames, Iowa. She will be with the Clear Lake Pharmacy in Clear Lake, Iowa.
Dr. Rachel Marie Poppin. Pocahontas, Iowa. She will be with Pocahontas Pharmacy in Pocahontas, Iowa. Dr. Danielle Jonay Boding. Fort Madison, Iowa. She will be with CVS in the Cedar Rapids, Iowa City area. Dr. Lacey Roach. From Waterloo, Iowa, she will be with Walgreens in Phoenix, Arizona. Dr. Brittany Bronneman, Iowa City, Iowa. She has a position with Carlmont Health in North Carolina. Dr. Courtney Gent. Dr. Gent is from Wellman, Iowa, and she will uh, be with us here in Iowa City working at the UIHC in a PGY1 residency. Dr. Megan Michelle Mormon. Dr. Mormon graduates with distinction. She is from Cedar Rapids and will be starting her career at the Northeast Iowa Family Practice in Waterloo. Dr. Elizabeth Amelon. <laughs> Onalaska, Wisconsin. She will be with the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics in a residency program here in Iowa City. Dr. Emma Kryenbrink. <laughs> Pella, Iowa. She will be beginning a community residency at the Mercy Family Pharmacy in Dubuque, Iowa. Dr. Elizabeth Webb. <laughs> Dr. Webb graduates with distinction. She is from Cummings, Iowa, and will be with the Veterans Affairs Iowa Healthcare System in Des Moines. Dr. Kathleen Wallace. <laughs> Davenport, Iowa. Jim Wallace, her father, class of uh, 19, maybe, is uh, <laughs> from Davenport, Iowa, and Jim will, has done the hooding, and uh, Kathleen will be with the Lincoln VA Healthcare System in Lincoln, Nebraska. <laughs> Dr. Marcy Ritter. Burlington, Wisconsin. She will be with McCullough's Prescriptions in Whitewater, Wisconsin. Dr. Ashley Ann Hildebrand. She will be with Blake's, Blakesley Drug in Manchester, Iowa. Dr. Hildebrand is from Dundee, Iowa. Dr. Jill Ann Moses. She is from Garnavilla, Iowa, and will graduate with distinction. She begins a uh, residency at the Children's Hospital of St. Francis in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Dr. Audrey Banner Kischevia. <laughs> Dr. Kischevia graduates with distinction. She is from Roseville, Minnesota, and will begin a uh, residency program at Froder Hospital in Milwaukee. Dr. Sarah Clarissa Sogstad from Forest City, Iowa. She is being hooded by her brother Matthew, a graduate of the class of 2009, her brother. 
Uh, she will begin a, uh, a residency, at, no, excuse me, she will begin practice at Mercy Medical Center in Mason City. Dr. Jessica Whalen. Dr. Whalen graduates with highest distinction. She is from Lincoln, Illinois, and will begin her career at the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics. Dr. Chelsea Hogan. From Eldridge, Iowa, she will be with Walgreens and the Quad Cities. Dr. Miranda Conop. <laughs> Dr. Conop graduates with highest, high distinction. She is from Winfield, Iowa, and will be with Walmart in Davenport. Dr. Lum Vo. Dr. Vo is from Decorah and will be with Walgreens and Clinton. Dr. Carrie Jo Sayer. <laughs> Dr. Sayer was uh, hooded by her sister, Lauren Jacoby, uh, a graduate of our college in 2007. Dr. Sayer graduates with highest distinction she is from Belle Plaine, Iowa, and will be with the Cornerstone Apothecary in Belle Plaine. Dr. Ann Starosta. <laughs> Plymouth, Minnesota. She will be relocating to uh, New York, where she will begin her career there. Dr. Monica Forte Clauda. <laughs> Dr. Clauda is from Minneapolis and will begin her career at Target in South Anchorage, Alaska. <laughs> Dr. Celeste Goodlow. Dr. Goodlow graduates with high distinction. She is from Hudson, Iowa, and will be with the Clinical Hospital in Minnesota. Dr. Teresa Lauer. <laughs> Williamsburg, Iowa. She will be with High V in Osage Beach, Missouri. Dr. Catherine Lee. Dr. Lee will be hooded by her father, Larry Lee, and her sister, Shelly Lee, both graduates of the College of Pharmacy. Catherine will, is from Kiyosakwa, and she will be with Walgreens in Des Moines. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Andrea Perez, Monrovia, California. She will be with, uh, she is from Monrovia, California, and be with, with Hannaford Brothers uh, Pharmacy in Coastal Region, Maine. Dr. Adrian Ellen Miller. Marion, Iowa. She will be with Walgreens and Marion. Dr. Clint Ivey. Dr. Ivey is from Las Vegas and will be with Target in American Fork, Utah. Dr. Whitney Slinker. Conrad, Iowa. She will be with New Care Pharmacy in Marshalltown. Dr. Megan Germer. Overland Park, Kansas. 
Dr. Germer also received a joint degree as a Master of Public Health. She, will, she graduates with high distinction and she will begin a residency program at the Lawrence Memorial Hospital in Lawrence, Kansas. Dr. Stacy Lynn Butel. <laughs> Fremont, Iowa. Walmart Pharmacy, Iowa City. Dr. Darcy Bennett. Fulton, Illinois. She will be with Walmart in Clinton. Dr. Bridget Gabara. Her hometown is Nigeria, and she will be with employer RPH on the go in Minnesota. Dr. Karen Sunny Kepler. From Cedar Rapids, Iowa, she will be with CVS in Asheville, North Carolina. Dr. Kathleen Waddle. <laughs> North Liberty, Iowa. She will be with Shepley Pharmacy doing a uh, residency program in Mount Vernon, Iowa. Dr. Molly Laker. Dr. Laker is from Dubuque and will be working with Hartig in Dubuque. Dr. Lisa Beers. Uh, Lisa is from Moline, Illinois, and Lisa tells us she is planning to relocate to unknown places. Dr. Kunya Walker. Formerly from Vietnam, she will be in a residency program in Omaha, Nebraska. Dr. Heejin Lee. Seoul, Korea. Dr. Lee is finalizing her career plans. Dr. Hin Luong. From Des Moines, she is weighing offers. Dr. Esther Chung. Dr. Chung graduates with distinction. She is from Burbank, California, and will be with CVS in the Bay Area of California. Dr. Ya Lang Lin. Dr. Ling, Lin is from Kaohsiung, Taiwan. She will be relocating to Taiwan. Dr. Pa Nia Yang. From Green Bay, Wisconsin. She is keeping her options open. Dr. Razan Mus Mosadang. El Malik. From Sudan. She will begin her PGY run residency in Wilmington, North Carolina. Dr. Tong Zhu. She's from Coralville, Iowa, and will begin a UIHC care pharmacy residency. Dr. Grace Kim. Dr. Uh, Dr. Kim was hooded by her mother, Sue Lee, who was a graduate of the College of Pharmacy. Grace is uh, going to, is from San Diego, California, 
uh, has a master's of public health and is applying in the process of applying for graduate programs. Dr. Nan Trong. <laughs> Davenport, Iowa. She will begin her career later this summer. Dr. Ni Thuy Pham. <laughs> From Sioux City, Iowa, she will be with Walmart in Spirit Lake. Dr. Zhao Lin Wu. <laughs> Iowa City, Iowa. He will be with Rite Aid in Bakersfield, California. Dr. Daniel Hernandez. Dr. Hernandez is from Miami, Florida, and will be with CVS in Cedar Rapids, Waterloo area. Dr. Matthew Ember Arnold. Good hands. Dr. Arnold graduates with distinction. He is from Aurora, Illinois, and will begin his career at St. Luke's Medical Center in Sioux City. Dr. Andrew Carson Washburn. <laughs> Marion, Iowa. He will be doing a PGY1 residency at Allen Memorial Hospital in Waterloo. Dr. Nirav Patel. <laughs> Dr. Patel graduates with high distinction. He is from West Des Moines and will be, give, be with Walmart in Washington, Iowa. Dr. Daniel Piercy. Um, <laughs> Keokuk, Iowa. He will be with Albertson Super Value in Seattle, Washington. Dr. Alex Hangartner. Dr. Hangartner graduates with highest distinction. He is from Castalia, Iowa, and will be with CVS in Houston, Texas. Dr. Katie Plussel. <laughs> Dr. Plussel graduates with distinction. She is from Iowa City, Iowa, and will be uh, pursuing a residency program in Indiana University Health Systems in Indianapolis. Dr. Christina Banks. <laughs> Dr. Banks is from Orland Park, Illinois, and will be doing a residency at the VA of Eastern Kansas in Topeka, Kansas. Dr. Catherine Cry. Iowa City, Iowa. She will be doing a residency at Mercy Hospital in St. Louis, Missouri. Dr. Nicole Rabs. Arlington Heights, Illinois. She will be with Advocate Lutheran General Hospital in a residency program in Park Ridge, Illinois. Dr. Phoebe Sebhatu. She's from Bloomington, Illinois, and will be with critical care specialists in Elmhurst, Illinois. Dr. Monica Jandura. St. Charles, Illinois. She will be with Evanston Hospital Residency Program in Evanston, Illinois. Dr. Lindsay Murphy.
She's from Marshalltown, Iowa, and will be with CVS in the suburbs of Chicago. Dr. Emily Israel. She graduates with high distinction. She is from Fairhaven, New Jersey, and will begin a residency program at the University of Michigan Medical Center in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Dr. Nathan Walliser. Dr. Walliser is from Waterloo, Iowa, and will join the Methodist Healthcare in Memphis, Tennessee. Dr. Brian Ajulu Chuku. <laughs> from Darien, Illinois, he will be with Walgreens in Dallas, Texas. Dr. Nathan Harold. Dr. Harold graduates with high distinction. He is from Yakima, Washington, and will be with St. Joseph Medical Center in Tacoma, Washington. Dr. David Demick. Dr. Demick graduates with distinction. He is from Tinley Park, Illinois, and will be with Mercy Hospital here in Iowa City. Dr. John Patrick Webb. <laughs> Dr. Webb's from Buffalo Center, Iowa, and will be with North County Healthcare doing a community residency in Flagstaff, Arizona. Dr. Jacob Hefter. Batavia, Illinois. He will be with Community Memorial Hospital in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Dr. Ryan Etchide. <laughs> LaSalle, Illinois. He will begin his career in Hy-Vee in Peru, Illinois. Dr. Kevin Rader. Dr. Rader graduates with distinction. He is from Bellevue, Iowa, and he will begin a uh, residency program at the U University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics in Iowa City. Dr. Alicia Elson. She is from Madrid, Iowa. She will begin a residency program at the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics. Dr. Elson also will be receiving a Master's of Public Health this uh, May. Dr. Stephanie Lucas. From Warrenville, Illinois. She is also receiving a Master's of Public Health. She will be a uh, resident with Ampath, which is going to be in Kenya, Africa. Dr. Amanda Wellens. From Green Bay, Wisconsin, she is finalizing her plans. Dr. Brianna Gadient. Dr. Gadient's from Goodhue, Minnesota, and will be with Walmart in Quincy, Illinois. Dr. Bryce Phillips. He is from Peculiar, Missouri. Uh, he will be with J&D Pharmacy in Warsaw, Missouri. Dr. Chase Moore. from Hannibal, uh, excuse me, Memphis, Missouri, and will begin his career at Hannibal Hospital in Hannibal, Missouri. Dr. Michael Donnelly. Dr. 
Morton Grove, Illinois. He will soon be negotiating a contract. Dr. Ryan Muller. From Ankeny, Iowa, he will be with Walgreens in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Dr. Andrew Noda. Dr. Noda graduates with high distinction. He's from Wheaton, Illinois, and will be with St. Vincent Hospital in Indianapolis. Dr. Ba An Pham. Paris, France. She will be with Bell Prescriptions in California. Dr. Tiffany Brom. From Bronx, New York. She will be with Bell Rx in New York. Dr. Emily Keene. Orlando, Florida. She will be with CVS in Ocala, Florida. Dr. Wasahan Nicodemus. Dr. Wa Nicodemus is from Los Angeles and will be with CVS in Visalia, California. Dr. Andrew Allen Berg. Storm Lake, Iowa. He will be with Target in Austin, Texas. Dr. Josh Moorhead. Mason City, Iowa. He is joining CVS in Kansas City. Dr. Nick Steffen. Waterloo, Iowa. He is joining CVS in Kansas City. Dr. Carolyn O'Neill. <laughs> Iowa City. Dr. O'Neill will begin a residency at Aurora Healthcare in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Dr. Pamela Wong. Cedar Rapids, Iowa. She will begin her career at New Cara Pharmacy in Marshalltown. She, was also, she will also receive her Master's of Public Health. Dr. Amanda Leffler. From Sioux City, Iowa, she is with Target in Woodbury, Minnesota. Dr. Courtney Crary. From Knoxville, Iowa. She will begin her career with Walgreens in Fort Worth, Texas. Dr. Malia Frohenhot. She will be with CVS in Dallas, Texas. Dr. Sarah Calhoun. Dr. Calhoun graduates with distinction. She is from Keokuk, Iowa, and will be with Walgreens in North Dallas, Texas. Dr. Nicole Goodall. Dr. Goodall graduates with distinction. She is from Del Mar, Iowa, and, be will, and will be with Mercy Hospital in Clinton. Dr. Stacy Livingston. Des Moines, Iowa. She will also, she will be at the University of Wisconsin Hospitals and Clinics in Madison, Wisconsin. She also has a certificate in public health. Dr. Robbie Lee Schwenker. <laughs> v 
Vinton, Iowa. He will be with New Cara Pharmacy in Coralville, Iowa. Dr. Joseph Paulson. <laughs> Coralville, Iowa. Dr. Paulson is looking forward to putting his degree to use. Dr. John Sherman Powers. <laughs> Doc Dr. Powers is being hooded by his wife, Heather Height, a graduate of 2008. He is from Waverly and will be with Allen Hospital in Waterloo, Iowa. Congratulations to the class of 2012. Wow. Congratulations again. This is absolutely fantastic. You know, I have to tell you before we do our closing remarks that I am so joyful to see all of these little tykes in the audience and hear their special voices. What I'd like to do is I'd like to suggest uh, we have some applications for future pharmacists right out here. <laughs> I'm always looking for good talent, so let's make sure we start them up early and we'll get them all little Hawkeye t-shirts to uh, really brand them early on. So thank you so much. It's just great to have this wonderful family event where we can all join together in fellowship and sell. Oh, you're coming up now. You're, you're, you're going to love this. Her mom is a graduate of our program. <laughs> so she's already bucking for a seat. That's great. Good for her. I, this never happened to me before. <laughs> that's wonderful. That is absolutely wonderful. And that's the spirit of celebration in the family, truly the family of our College of Pharmacy and the family of pharmacy as a profession. Today is indeed a very special day. It marks the culmination of years of effort on the part of many. And it represents the beginning of a new journey into healthcare in which each of these graduates will undoubtedly leave a profound mark upon whom all they serve. To the faculty, I'd like to take a moment to recognize a very special group of individuals. For the past four years, the group of men and women seated to my far left have given much to enrich the lives of our graduates intellectually, emotionally, professionally, and I must add, depending upon the subject matter at hand and our students' level of preparation spiritually. Frankly, for a secular institution, I've witnessed a whole lot of praying at times. <laughs> we are indeed blessed to have a truly outstanding faculty and staff. Through their research, they're in constant quest of the next critical step in finding new drugs or better ways to deliver health care. And through their scholarship of teaching, they are always striving to impart knowledge, stimulate critical thinking, and hone students' problem-solving abilities. Theirs is clearly a labor of love. Faculty, please stand. 
All of you, I ask you please that you join me in recognizing these very fine men and women for all that they have done for our graduates and for all that they continue to do for the profession of pharmacy. Thank you. To our guests, I would especially like to thank the grandparents, parents, spouses, other family members, and friends of the graduates here today. Your personal, moral, and of course, financial support have been critical for these graduates who have achieved this important milestone in their lives today. Might I ask, please, while I'd like to have all of you stand, I would especially like to have the parents grandparents and spouses. Could you please stand so we could recognize you, please? People travel wide and far, and every year we sort of recognize the fact that there are some extraordinary marriages that take place when people come here to celebrate our graduates. Sue Lee is the mother of Grace Kim. Sue Lee is a distinguished professor in a college of pharmacy in Korea and is also a 1995 graduate of our college of pharmacy. Sue Lee, I know you're out there. I'd like you to stand and please be recognized. She came all the way from Korea to join her daughter here today in the special celebration. Sue Lee, where are you? Right here in the back. Thank you. Professionalism. You knew I had to get it in one last time, don't you? What you choose to profess and how you exercise all of the privileges that will be bestowed upon you will be decided in the days to come and has been certainly underscored in the messages that were conveyed both by Dr. Macklin and Dr. Osterhaus. Pharmacist, just saying the word connotes much in today's society. Responsibility, respect, integrity, trust, and healing are a few of the things that quickly come to my mind. Henceforth, you'll be called a pharmacist for several reasons. First, you have earned the distinction, truly earned the distinction. And that title carries through the years of study and hard work and is certainly exemplified in the title pharmacist. But bear in mind that this is just a beginning point not an end point. You'll always be required to continue to learn and hone your skills for a true health care provider's time as a student never ends. Second, you're about to enter into a very special covenant with the public. That covenant will willingly place lives in your hands. And in return, you will be obligated to draw upon all of your special knowledge and skills to help ensure the health and safety of those for whom you have been entrusted to serve. In that, regard, in that regard, I draw upon the words of Michelangelo, who once said, the greatest danger for most of us lies not in setting our, our aim too high and falling short, but in setting our aim too low and achieving our mark. I urge you always to aim high. Those, we, those who we serve always deserve our very best. And third and last, you will become a member of a very select community. This community called the profession of pharmacy is one built upon trust, discipline, communication, collaboration, caring, and a firm commitment to health promotion and disease prevention. Our profession demands these things. Our patients have come to expect nothing less. For these reasons and so many more, you'll have the unique privilege of forever bearing the title pharmacist. 
I am especially proud and privileged to be among the first to call you a pharmacist because I know in my heart that each of you is so deserving of this recognition. Once again, to you, my very special class of 2012, the first ones I've journeyed with from beginning to end, congratulations to you. Friends, this concludes the 126th commencement of the University of Iowa College of Pharmacy. I ask that all attendees, please, remain seated during the recessional. Once all of the graduates and faculty have exited, I invite everyone to please join us out in the foyer for some light refreshment. In closing, this has truly been a very special day. On behalf of the entire College of Pharmacy family, I thank you. Go Hawkeyes! Thank you.